So now, uh, one problem in Paradise, like OFDM sounds great, but there are some challenges with OFDM. And one of the important challenges with OFDM is a problem called the peak to average problem. And I'll just try and tell you quickly what that means. Um, let's look at the idea of um, higher order modulation and an approach which is OFDM. First of all, if I'm using QAM modulation, of course, like here's 16 QAM, and we know that the power per symbol is varying. So it's not always the same. So, the, so that means that there's some variation in the power. And in the OFDM, the OFDM, I have a sum of sinusoids. Each one of the different subcarriers is a sinusoidal signal. So this is giving you an idea that the swings in the power uh, could be important because um, sometimes these sums of sinusoids are going to uh, reinforce one another, sometimes they'll negate one another, and of course, the, uh, depending on what the data is, there's also swings that are coming because of the data. Um, so, uh, this is sort of showing the different data streams, and each one could have a different power depending on which one is added, and of course, um, the uh, summing of these sinusoids. Uh, here's a couple, you know, if they would be larger, if they're at a larger one, and if they happen to be come from one of these inner points of the constellation, of course, the amplitude will be smaller. And I'm adding all of these uh, um, as well. What that means is if I look at the time domain signal, I said that I couldn't look at the time domain signal and pick out which, where are the data bits in there because I've gone through this FFT process. But if I look at the average value of this uh, time domain signal, and then I look at the peak value, that ratio is going to be higher than in single carrier modulation. And so I have a very large dynamic range that I have to be able to cover. And that may be challenging for some equipment. Uh, so the peak to average problem is something that we'll attack uh, by different uh, digital signal processing techniques to maybe try and do some clipping, try and reduce it so that I don't require such a high um, uh, dynamic range. So a little summary on what's going on with OFDM. Uh, what are the advantages of OFTM? Why are we turning to OFTM? It's because it's robust against multipath. That's the main uh, motivation, at least in, in our discussion. It's less complex than equalization. So if I want to look at a very um, advanced uh, maximum likelihood sequence estimation, of course, it's much less complex. And it might be uh, maybe more complex or similar complexity to uh, a linear solution, but it might be higher performance than those linear solutions depending on what the channel is. Uh, it's very spectrally efficient, uses the bandwidth well, no compromises there, and it's robust against narrow band interference. So I haven't talked about that, but there could be some, well, uh, we talked about nulls and the fact that uh, a particular, a null will induce a problem in one place, but it won't like screw up the whole transmission because it'll just be isolated. And it's the same as if, it, if it's not just a null in the channel response, but if there's actually an interfering signal, another signal, which is narrow band, which is coming and overlaying, well, it will not be troubled as much by that as well. Disadvantages of OFDM, well, it is uh, sensitive to uh, frequency errors, to phase noise, to timing errors. Like, everything's got to be lined up pretty nicely in an OFDM. So there is some sensitivity there that you have to deal with. And of course, the large peak to average power ratio is a challenge with OFDM. Uh, one example, I just want to mention, I mentioned several times the 802.11 standard, which is the Wi Fi standard, which uses OFDM. So they have, for instance, in the, 50, in the 5 gigahertz band, they have several 20 megahertz channels. Um, this is also um, similar to the 2.4 gigahertz uh, 802.11 uh, approach. So each one of these separate channels, and you can see this sort of typical, um, you know, you see the very sharp edges here. That means there's OFDM in this channel. And if I zoom in on one of these 20 megahertz bands, you can see that that's uh, where I have a bunch of subcarriers on each one of them. So in Wi-Fi, you know, you can use any one of these. And within one, you're going to be doing OFDM. Um, there are some guard bands in the frequency domain to keep these uh, separated from one another. 